4D Sports Talk broadcast is brought to you by Physical Therapy U. For more information, they can be reached at ptuclinic.com. Audrey's Restaurant Banquet Facility of East Bridgewater. Their website is audreasrestaurant.net for all of your restaurant and banquet needs. Megan Chase of Kim West Real Estate. Her contact information is 774-240-7707 for all of your real estate needs. Sports Attention Getter. It's 4D Sports Talk. Come listen to the sports stars of tomorrow. You can call in at 508 222 1320 on WARA 1320 AM. In the 4 Deep Sports Talk here on the news station, 1320 AM WARA and online, all one word, 4 Deep Sports Talk.com. I'm Dominic Damiano as we try to work our way through this uh, pandemic. And I'm trying to be ambidextrous, and I think I got it going. So we are live here on 1320MWARA, and I'll shoot in the images. And we are waiting for uh, Coach CB from Bridgewater Inn. So people who saw our post that we are highlighting the uh, Lady Trojans of Bridgewater Inn. Coach CB was nominated uh, as our Girls Coach of the Year as I uh, things going here and I'm trying so people to understand what goes on with uh, trying to do radio and TV I have two things going on right now I want to give a big shout out oh we have a call here's our first call and let's see what we got going on so we have hi you're first on 4D Sports Talk hello hi hi Dominic how are you Cheryl thank you we got another call coming in oh this is fantastic Hello, you're on 4D Sports Talk. Hello? Oh, can we hit the button? Hello, you're on 4D Sports Talk. Hi, Kenzie. Kenzie, how are you? Cheryl, we have Kenzie on the other line. Perfect. Ken, Ken, hey, can you hear, Kenzie, can you hear Cheryl? I mean, yeah. Coach Jimmy? Good. That's what? You really can't hear me well? you got to turn your hearing aid up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, how about now? I turned the. Uh, how about now? All right, cool. So first of all, guys, uh, you know, uh, well, so many years I've been covering you guys uh, locally on Bridgewater and Radio Access TV, and I just thought it'd be cool for us to get through this pandemic together, as you be, you're being our first guest on the show, because I'm I have an empty studio. I usually have a bunch of interns in here and Lucy Cabral with me who helps me out and unfortunately you guys got stuck with me. I just want to apologize in advance. <laughs> well we appreciate having the opportunity to come on. Appreciate all the youth to promote, you know, the sport that we love and and uh thank you for that. But it's a privilege to have us on today. You know, there's everything for sure. It really is. So I mean you guys are actually gonna be the uh the experiment, I guess, the great experiment. But first of all, Coach, I want to congratulate you Congratulate you on being nominated our Coach of the Year here for the Sports Talk. And I have a plaque. I don't have a plaque. I have a trophy. And I'm going to treat, we're trying to treat it like the Stanley Cup. We have your name, of course, you know, the school. We've got a picture of you. And we're going to try to add that into our, uh, our new Facebook page we're going to do for uh, Coaches and Players of the Year. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. That's a tremendous honor, obviously. Couldn't do it without the young ladies that I had uh, on our team and all their support, as well as, you know, having the coaches of you know, John Gallagher and Haley Powell to help us. But, you know, obviously it's not just a single award for me as a coach, but I think it's be flying to the program and direction that we have had, you know, in, with our program. That's the thing that we've got going on now. Absolutely. So I'll just give you guys a heads up because you guys are not in the studio. So we're going to take a, we're going to actually take around we'll take three breaks in this hour. So if you so just to let you know if if you hear music chime in, that means I forgot to press the right button. <laughs> 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 so 
So, not a problem at all. All right, cool. So, Kenzie, I, um, your sister saw a lot of the games from school, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, cool. So, I'm going to brag about you first because you're, you're the first one I have on. Now do, we, now, do we have any other players lined up to come on? Or, or is it just, Kenzie, do I have the pleasure of just having you today? Um, nope, it's just myself and Ken. Right? Cool. That'll work. I just came around to Kenzie today. You did? What time did you start, start, up, start getting on her about it? Yeah, I know. She's, she's an easy stuff. So she's an easy Well, she kind of knows who I am, so it's probably easy. Well, yeah, the short fat guy does the games. <laughs> so, for Kenzie Magalonis, I have, uh, she played She played in 590, 591 minutes. Uh, her field goal percentage was, uh, percentage was uh, .311, which is outstanding. Average uh, rebounds was 5.6. Total was 134. Wow. Offense 50. Uh, make sure I get the right, right person. Off, offense 55. Defensively 79. Again, 134. She averaged you know, just just under 10 points. We're going to round off to 11. 11 points a game. 100 steals. Now, Kenzie, did you hear us calling your uh, 100th steal in the garden? Did you get a chance to watch that game? I did. Well, you're welcome. It was our, our pleasure. So, from a player's uh, vantage point, right? I, I mean, you guys lost a couple, a couple, uh, a couple seniors, you know. And I don't think it really hurt the team that much. I mean, losing any anybody, and oh, thank you, sir. Hurting anybody, um, you know, as far as another starter, always hurts. But it doesn't seem like I'm trying to say. I guess it doesn't seem like. You got hurt that bad with this graduating class this year. Yeah. Is that fair to say, or? Going into this year, right, because you're going into this year, before I, I start talking to Coach Stevie, what was the mindset, you know, going, I mean, you know the girls, you see them in school, and you know you played with them a couple of years, and of course you lost your sister, and a couple other mm -hmm. really good players, what was the mindset going into the first practice, or, you know, before you realized this could be a very special season? Yeah, um, I kind of realized it could be a special season after the last game last year. I knew, like, the talent that we had coming up from our sophomore class. And I kind of just said it straight out, like, right from the beginning, like, you know what our goal is, and we're totally capable of it. We wanted to make it to the Garden. Um, we wanted to get that self sectional title and make it to um, the state championship, which we fell short of. But um, definitely had a lot of success. And I think it all started from just having that mindset at the beginning of the season um, of where we we want to end up in the end. And everyone bought in and everyone had fun doing it. But. Absolutely. So what was your, uh, when you first, I know you guys did the TikTok thing. Because I was, I was dragging my <laughs> gear and I just caught you guys coming off the elevator and, and uh, talking to Katie. So how was yeah. it, you came, the, you came up with the idea of the TikTok. I mean, I kind of, you just you guys up the like that little fun before tip off. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not afraid on making TikTok, but uh, <laughs> my teammates are, so uh, we just did um, want to do something fun. I mean, everyone was a little nervous in the big game, so I think it definitely loosened all of us up, uh, and we always have fun together, so. I know, right? You can definitely tell it. Yep. Coach, that's one thing you have to wonder what was camaraderie with these guys, huh? Absolutely. I mean, you know, that's one of the things we really trust in the area is that we have a family. Um, that we look after each other and take care of each other and support each other from thick and thin. And that's what you saw all season long, was kids really supporting each other and holding holding each other up. Um, and obviously, practice can be tremendously difficult on anyone at any given time. Games can have their highs and lows. But at the end of the day, they all love and support each other and encourage each other. 
and that's really, you know, where it starts from is these, these young ladies forming those bonds. And that's what you see, you know, through the craziness of TikTok or the activities that they do together. Um, like yesterday, for example, um, all the kids got together and, and formed a, a parade, a social distance parade, and drove by one of our freshmen's house to celebrate their birthday. And that's something that they do independent of me. And that gives us these two bonds that they have formed with each other. And you see that transferring on to the court. You know, they trust each other and they love each other and they support each other and, and they have battle with each other every day. Um, and that, that, that caring and that factor of, you know, being supportive of each other really does transfer onto the court. It really does. For, i got to answer a call that text I got from Lauren uh, Mulhern. I know she's, like, she's watching on Facebook Live. We have a little bit of status. I'm trying to begin with that to do two things at once. I hope she can hear us. But I really apologize for uh, any, any, you know, any mess up here on the uh, Facebook Live site that I'm doing. But trying to do two things at once. <laughs> You're wearing many hats. I am. I'm telling you, as long as I don't start a fire, I mean, you've got a good chance of pulling off the show today. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, Kenzie, have, um, what offers have you got with school so far? I mean, everyone talks about in the town and, and then laying them about, you know, uh, Shay Bowling about all the offers she got and stuff like that. What about you? Um, I have two offers in the National As of right now. Yeah. <laughs> right? So what, uh, any certain one comes to mind that, um, or you just, uh, well, you're going to wait until you try to wait for this uh, social distancing uh, gets a little bit more in control and people can start living normal lives. Do you have a time or a date when you and your mom and dad want to, or even your sister want to go up and look at the school? Or have you ever done that um, already? Fortunately, I have been able to go and look at them. Um, it's definitely hard with all this going on. Look at the other schools that I was kind of interested in. Um, but yeah, so luckily I've been able to do this with them. So do you want to do it right like now or do you want to wait till later? <laughs> um, probably soon. I want to. Well, Kenzie's such a contemplative kid that, you know, I think she really wants to take her time to continue to, to make sure that she's making you know, the right decision for herself, for her action, for her. Guys, we're going to take our first break. We're going to step away. You are listening to 4 d Sports Talk here on the news station, 1320 AM WARA, and uh, on our Facebook page of uh, SB4 with 4 d Sports Talk. We are highlighting the 2019 2020 Coaches of the Year, Cheryl Seedy from Bridgewater Rain on the course, Kenzie Madalonis, one of the stars. We'll be back with more right after this. When you need your business to reach your target audience, let us help you get back into the game. We do college recruiting CDs covering Little League Baseball and high school sporting events. We get it done right. Of the game, the Trojan 60. Save your one, three for Bowling. Hits! Shoot scores! McCormick scores again on the rebound. Welcome back. You are listening to four of these sports talks here on the news station, 1320 AM, WARA, and online, all one word, four of these sports talks. I'm Dominic Giannino. News to Brawl will be in next week. She's going to run it for a couple of days. As I have to guess to go back to work and make some money. Um, and she'll, I believe she's going to try to have someone come in and uh, help out with the show. And she has a couple of guests. 
schedule. We'll make sure we uh, promote that on Facebook and on our Twitter page. And I'm happy to be joined by Kenzie Madalonis, now a senior, and of course our coach of the year, Cheryl Sweetie from Bridgewater Random. Please tell me, guys, I didn't lose you. No, no I'm still here. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. So, Coach, your outlook going into the season, I mean, um, for the most part, since I've known you, you've always had a competitive team. You expect that out of your players. And I've yet to see not one girl, not one ball player, not give you 110%. What do you credit that to? Is that more work ethic than when you were younger, you think? Well, yeah, there's definitely an expectation for when you go on that big lottery at the end of the uniform that you are going to be hard learned, you're going to be gritty, you're going to be determined. Um, the work ethic that the lottery and his kids bring to the table, that's just the expectation. Um, and you're right, that's, that's what I grew up with. You know, I grew up with battling two older brothers who didn't back down an inch for me, you know, even though I was the youngest. Um, the expectation set in our household was one of hard work and loyalty and, and ethics. And, and those are all things that I try to continue to bring um, that personality, I guess, to our team. Um, something that, you know, always continues to be stressful when I have to play at Stonehill. And that's, that's just kind of how we do things. Um, the expectation is that you are going to dig in deep defensively. But if there is a loose ball, you are going to you know, get on the ground, get after it. Um, that you are going to be really committed. So these are just standards that we set forth in the program, but really they're standards that were the groundwork was laid, you know, before us by that play of the state of the act, you know, that play through Jerry Connor era and forward. Now any any teams coming into this past season that you personally wanted to see as easy as uh is there a point, you know, to see where you guys were at as a team? Is there any certain teams you wanted to measure yourself against and you and the coaching staff or at least two had a chance how you could measure your squad? Well, there's always teams that you look in the play and compete against because, you know, there's so many teams in, in the Division One stuff, particularly, that are such high quality. Um, but, you know, it, the quality of, of the South teams is so deep that um, – that we're always looking to make sure that we're, up, we're continuing to upgrade our competition to give our kids the best advantage as we move into the postseason. So, yeah, you know, we're already working on building a schedule for next year. Um, we reached out to teams, teams have reached out to us, so it's just a matter of time of, of continuing to build and strengthen that uh, that schedule so that the, the kids are truly battle tested uh, when that big point in time rolls around. So no particular team. So basically, you just take every team as they come out. You got there to say as far as how the team comes up to play during that night. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like it's uh, you know, as far as we're looking at our schedule, um, you know, obviously you have relationships with with coaches, and you have to keep those relationships in mind about you know teams that Bridgewater and has consistently played over the course of um, you know, the the season. Um, and then, you know, you're always trying to outreach and, and touch base with other teams that you would like to play during the course of the year. Um, we're always out, out scouting. I think I can't even tell you how many days out of our, our season that either myself or Coach Gallagher or uh, my husband, Jim, actually goes out and scouts a lot for us as well. We're always out there trying to, to look at other teams and see opponents and, you know, analyzing their strengths and weaknesses and see how we measure up against them. You know. But in terms of scheduling, you know, it, it's pretty much a, it's a chess match to try to determine what teams have flexibility in their schedules and what teams don't, and what teams are willing to play it. You know, that's, that's what we're seeing right now is a lot of teams are kind of saying, oh gosh, you're, you're going to be loaded again next year. We don't necessarily want to be as a competitor right now, but call us in five years, you know, so that's kind of where we are. Okay. Kenzie, how about you, young lady? First of all, I gotta give you, you get two official complaints, Kenzie. You ready? Yes. All right, so they need, they, they said you need to speak up. <laughs> okay. So, and I'm, and, I'm, and uh, you know, you're trying your best for what we have going on here, so I know you're trying your best. So, what about you, kid? What about coming in the season for you? You know, your junior year, and, you know, you got a great, another great, you had another great season. But was there any certain teams you wanted to measure yourself against to realize, you know, your game is where you wanted it? Um, I mean, not a particular team. Um, 
you can't take every game of very seriously, every team is, um, uh, is a competitor for us. So, um, obviously, we want to play like the best competition for us. We are a really talented team. So, we were excited to go into um, like playoffs and stuff like that because, you know, we're playing the competition is getting better and better every game. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't say there's a particular team, but almost just every game coming ready when we're, when we're going up again. Okay. Now, what did you think about the big, the um, the Southeastern Conference, the SEC? Could you care less if you just look at it like you just said, it's, you know, whoever comes up against you, comes up against you, and, you know, they got to earn the win. Is that pretty much your mindset? Do you have any yeah. thoughts coming into this with this Southeastern Conference yeah. thing? Yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great conference. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, you know what I meant. I mean, I was just trying to get, I was just trying to, you know, get a little curious on your mind. How about you, Coach? What were, were you more excited about this new conference, the Southeast Conference? You know, adding more teams to your conference instead of having the old OCL and merging these, uh, the you big know, three? Yeah, the, the OCL was the expanded conference for so many years. Um, we had so many great battles, and unfortunately, you know, when it started to disintegrate, um, it became more and more difficult for the, the members that were left in order to get in. Uh, so joining a new conference enables us to have more games already on our docket for next year, um, and then to fill in the remaining games with, you know, other competition, other competitors. It certainly seems that we've, we've started to play, you know, we've always Already spent a whole relationship with Boston and, and playing Derby and, and playing New Bedford. So adding them in was just a natural thing. They were kind of without a home. Being, you know, they had to do three, but it's not really a big conference. We were without a home. So it's a good fit for both uh, the OPL and the big three to kind of have this merge going forward. I think some of it was based on, I remember uh, Dan Bjorn mentioned a lot, of, some of it, and he didn't really say that was the case, so I'm just giving my own side of things. It was more based off travel, like Dartmouth, not Dartmouth, but Barnstable's way down the Cape, where Dartmouth yeah. was too far away, and, you know, the, you know, the furthest one away out of this conference is probably you guys in Brockton. Right. You know, it's nice when you can have um, competitors that are sort of far from First and foremost, we have to know who's the team, in that if we are taking them on these long bus trips away, from, um, and take some time to get home, what impact does that have on the academic? Because that really is, is our first priority, obviously, the academic um, well-being of the student-athletes. So going into the Southeast Conference allows the travel time to dramatically be shortened. Uh, we, you know, we could have joined other conferences, but that would have made sense that our student-athletes are on the bus ride for longer times and longer durations. And we wouldn't want to see any negative impact on these student athletes, you know, asking kids to get home after a basketball game at 10 o'clock at night and then turn around and do two, three hours of homework. That's not in the best interest of, of them, um, of their academics. Right, good point for you. Now, how is that police with with the, uh, the academics? When you're as successful as you guys obviously are, sometimes the first thing the competitors will say and the other schools might say is, oh, they don't police academics with the uh, There's no way. Kenzie Madalonis is that is that good and she's such a great academic student. You know what I mean? Some people do think foolish like that. But so how do we right. place that over at PR? Yeah, there's always been a high priority on academics. These kids are students first and athletes second, and that is where the priorities lay. Uh, if there's ever any conflict with a student or an athlete having to attend, you know, an additional AP study session or going to extra help after school or whatever it may be. Athletics come secondary to academics. Uh, these kids perform not only on the court, but they also perform, uh, you know, in the classroom as well. One of our seniors this year was the fifth ranked kid in our in her class. Uh, the, the team prior, the seniors, ten, I want to say nine of the eleven kids were National Honor Society members. So there's definitely a high priority based on academics, especially at the are, you know, like I said, these kids are competing in the on the athletic field, but they're also competing in the classroom. And, and they're in the community. And these are really, they're stewards of their community. So you community service without asking. 
know, so that's just one thing that I'm very, very lucky to have. We have very well-rounded young ladies in, on our team. Very good. All right, Kenzie, now your turn. You ready? Yeah. How do you balance being on such a great ball team, something that you love more than life itself in school with? What advice can you give some of the girls that want to make this team and help you guys out next year? As far as balancing academics. You definitely have to um, really focus on balancing all that. It's a lot. And especially if you want to be a great player, you're in the gym hours on that. So, um, just kind of getting yourself a schedule and putting in time to make sure you get your schoolwork done and then also being able to get in the gym as much as you can. So, um, just to balance it out, um, schoolwork comes first for me. Um, so I always make sure I stay on top of that. And by doing that, I'm able to be in the gym all the time. Very good. Very good. Right, we're getting ready to take our second break. I was flying by. I got... <laughs> So, yeah, we're getting ready to take a uh, second break. I have the privilege of having Kenzie Madalonis and our coach of the year, Cheryl Seedy from Bridgewater Raynham High School. We're about to take our second break. We apologize. The lines are full because we have the privilege of having those guys on. But I want to thank people who reached out on Facebook and on Twitter and stuff like that about what's going on. If you have a question for the, for the young ladies. All right, so we'll take our break. You are listening to 4D Sports Talk here on the news station, 1320 AMW ARA, and online, all one word. You can listen to podcasts if you have a problem with the Facebook. Just go to our website, all one word, F-O-U-R-4DSportsTalk.com, and on Facebook, actually four words, 4D Sports Talk. We'll be back with more right after this. Welcome back. You are listening to 4 d Sports Talk here on the news station, 1320 AM WARA, and online, all one word, 4 d Talk.com. We are live. We are not, this is not a safe delay. We're actually trying to make the best of this pandemic, and we are experimenting, and we have the privilege right now of having our coach of the year, Coach Shelly Stephen from Bismarck Land, and one of our top players, Kenzie Madalonis. Guys, you still with me? Yeah, I am. See? Wow, I'm doing good. This is pretty good. Two for two. Two for two. Two for two. So, uh, <laughs> Kenzie, let's talk about some of your teammates. And, um, you know, I got their strengths and weaknesses, I guess, you know, on the stat sheet. But you know the players better than anyone, just like the coach knows her players. Uh, I just thought I'd get your opinion on if you could just elaborate on some of the players. And I was yeah. going to start with Shea uh, Bowen. Yeah. Um, Shay, I... I've been playing this play for six years now. Um, for a whole few days in the fall, winter, and spring weather, summer. Um, so she's my girl on and off the court, so I definitely um, love playing with her. Um, but she's just, she's awesome. I mean, she's super unselfish. She's always looking for that extra pass. Um, she's a scorer from all over the floor. She plays tough defense. Um, rebounds the ball very well. Um, so I'm very grateful to be able to play with her. Um, okay. okay. Well, thank you, young lady. So with that, I'll just finish up by saying she averaged 10 points a game, 52 steals, and she averaged just under 19 points, 19 points a game. She, uh, so 10 rebounds, 569 minutes on the court. Again, 52 steals, I meant to say. I think I said that wrong the first time. And just under 19 points. Now, what about uh, Talia Tai? Um, same with Talia. I've played with her all year long um, for the past six years. So, you definitely have that camaraderie. Um, and she's just she's tough. Um, she plays awesome defense. She's a scorer as well all over the floor. Um, great teammate. So I really enjoy playing with both of them. Okay, then of course we have uh, Amber Silva. Of course, I'm just running down the list. 
Yeah. Um, Amber is tough. Um, I love playing defense with her. She's also scrappy. She goes all over the ball. Um, much like me. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad I've been able to play with her this past year. She's, she's been, um, a really good asset to our team. And we have, uh, Kelly, uh, Fiona. Fiona Kelly. Yeah. I said that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Fiona. Um, I love Fiona. Uh, you don't always see, um, uh, stuff she does. It's a lot of little things. Um, uh, but her little, her little things is why we're so successful at it as a team. Very cool. And then you have, um, uh, Emma Flaherty. Emma Flaherty? Yeah. Um, I love Emma. She's a great person. Um, she's, she's our little freshman. Always will be. Um, I, uh, we have such a good relationship with her and I'm, I'm really excited to see what she'll, she's going to bring to our team in the next year. Absolutely. Then, um, Bella, uh, Bella Calvani. Um, yeah, Bella, uh, Bella is also one of those players where you don't always see, uh, what she's doing. She does little things. She's, um, she's a tenacious defender. She's all over the ball. Um, so yeah, she's, she's a great asset for us as well. All right, coach. So help me, maybe you can tell me if we'll finish line up the rest of your roster and talk about these young ladies. Sure. You got, uh, uh, Dana Postick. Postick. Oh, uh, yeah, dude. So Dana came up, um, she originally was, uh, one of those kids that split between the JV and the varsity program early in the year. Um, and really, when she took, moved to varsity full time, she started to provide a little bit of additional support in that two guard position. And then she would do that, you know, eventually, I hate to say it, but eventually when Kenzie leaves us, you know, fast, she was up. Our next step along this journey will be uh, Dan is one that we really look to continue to mold into that next point guard position for us, you know, along with Amber um, and then, you know, possibly with Emma as well. Okay, then we have um, uh, Mrs. McGrath. Uh, Veronica? Veronica. I missed the vowel. I didn't ask my questions. I was trying to read her first name. Veronica, I'm sorry. Yes. Veronica was one of our senior leadership, uh, senior captains this year. Uh, a kid that really motivates kids behind the scenes, you know, and, and was able to step in and, and provide some team minutes during different times of the of different games with our side. She's actually going to be going to UNH next year, and I think she's studying, uh, gosh, she's not doing all job, but oh gosh, I think she wants to be a working possibly as like a, a guiding counselor or work with um with you know people who are potential in new situations and things like that. That's cool. And so we wish her that we wish her the best of luck. And here's another spot that I used to love to call during the games is Jordan Striggles. Yes, Jordan. Jordan is you know going to be rising to the for us so you know she's a kid that you know is, is done again with best interest of the team and is plays, you know, out of position. You know, naturally, I think she's more of a three, but she's been asked to play into the four spot just because, you know, one is she alone sitting at the three. Um, so, you know, she recognizes that if she'd like to, you know, contribute to the team, that she had to make a sacrifice for her position and move into the four, and she's able to give us some few minutes and, and get some key defensive stops and rebounds, of course. Okay, then we have uh, Ashley J. Ashley is another kid that, um, that, Lit was one of the swing players in the beginning of our program last year. Definitely a kid that I'm looking uh, to see how she continues to grow and, and develop over the course of the summer. Her defensive intensity is second and none. Uh, she has a willingness to attack, gap, and get into the lane. Um, so it's definitely another kid that has a bright future ahead of us. Very cool. And then we have uh, Kyra Thompson. Kyra is uh, actually she's. Like I said, the fifth ranked kid in our senior graduating class. Thank you, Carol, for her for that. Uh, she is going to be going to UNH next year, and she's, I believe she's studying biomedical engineering. So, um, another kid that, uh, you know, just did yeoman's work on, you know, coming to practice, being positive, taking whatever minute uh, she was given with a big smile on her face. Uh, just a very good team kid. You know, 
positive and happy and, and uplifting to all those, you know, to all. It's definitely will be missed. So that's the one of the two graduating seniors for us. And now we have yep. uh, Hannah, Hannah Smith. Yeah, Hannah was uh, such a great kid that, that just really struggled with um, his, his significant knee injury during the course of her career at the um, But he's a tremendous long range shooter. Uh, and I'm hopeful that he issues resolve, um, that she can get back to being healthy. Um, and that's, you know, that's where she needs to focus on to make sure that she is a, has health and that her knee is healthy. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing what she can bring to us. Okay, finishing up the roster, we have Grace, um, Grace Forrester. Yep. So Forrester, Grace am another, I saying that wrong? Yeah, no, Grace Forrester. Um, so Grace is another one of the kids that uh, swung between the Davie University program last year. Uh, you know, another kid that had a really tremendous amount of positiveness or positivity, I guess, to, to the program. Worked tremendously hard and, and like that. Didn't gain a lot of experience in the varsity team this year because of the swing stature, but, you know, depending on how hard she worked next year and and um, how her skill set is improved, we're going to support too much to do for us. Very cool. And we got Megan Feeney. Again, Megan is another one of those kids that was a elite roster addition um, for us. Another one of those kids that played on the JV level this year, primarily. Um, because, again, there's so many talented kids ahead of us. But a hard-working kid, a tough, tenacious defender, and a rebounder. So, you know, another one of those high school kids. So we'll see what happens with her as well. As said, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see some of the how the, some of the kids do uh, swung between Davy and Varsity last year. I'm sure that getting the taste of the experience in the garden that Fry Varsity kids is going to fuel their summer workouts. Okay. Uh, then we have Sam Sylvia. Yep, Sam Sylvia, again, has been along the same lines. Um, a kid that we brought up, um, you know, for that end of season tournament run. Again, she was uh, on mark potential, and uh, she's going to have to keep, we'll continue to work hard, and, and the growth potential is there for Sam as well as all those other kids. So, uh, like I said, we're excited to see that we've got some depth coming back. So, First day of trials is, is definitely going to be um, a bit successful to see of who has worked out and who has that internal motivation and drive to do the workouts in the pandemic when you can't necessarily get into the gym. So, and just see what happens to some of these kids. Absolutely. So, uh, that, I, think I, that's the, I think that's the whole roster. It's mostly finished 21 and 3, 8 and 0 in the conference, 10 and 0 at home, 7 and 1 away, and the neutral teams were uh, 4 and 2. Again, Big thanks to Jim C for helping us out. Boy, he made me sound like I knew what I was talking about during <laughs> some of these games. So, uh, Kenzie, what do you try to instill in some of these young girls as far as, um, especially, I guess the biggest thing is the speed of the game. No one knows how fast the game is, you know, no more than you. I mean, you're right in the middle of a ticket. I mean, you had five, five, 591 minutes in the game, in the season. You know, you average yeah. 591. That's a lot of time. What's the biggest thing you try to instill in the younger players when it comes to the speed of the game at that level? Um, it's just something you have to get used to. Um, you, the more, like, practice and have it, and the more, um, the more you just you get in those games and you start going at that speed, you just get used to it. So I would just say um, just continue to work hard and, and you're to go in that game to be ready. How about, how about conditioning? Is there certain things you did different to make sure you stayed at that top level for Division One uh, girls basketball? Did you do a lot of cardio, a lot of running? You, mm-hmm. Is that something you would you would recommend for these young kids that want to, you know, get, show them that they can play and help out this team? Definitely. Um, conditioning is a big part of this game. Um, can't stay in the game if you're if you're tired and two seconds. So um, it's a big part of my everyday um, running, getting in that cardio, staying in shape. Um, it was a big thing for us this season. Um, we did run a short bench, so um, we were running every day at practice, just kind of staying the best as we could to um, perform well every day. Well, very good. All right, girls, we're going to take our last break. Can I hold on to you for at least another 15 minutes? 
Not a problem. Genzie, that, can I still hold on to you for a little bit, a little bit longer? Yeah, that's good. Right, very good. So we're going to step away. We're going to take our last break. We are listening live. We are not, this is not a recording or a tape. We are live here as we have the pleasure of having our girls basketball coach of the year, Bridgewater Ringham head coach, Cheryl Seavey, and standout player, Kenzie Madalana. You are listening here on 4D Sports Talk. On WRA 1320, of course, on our Facebook page, all one word for the sports talk show. We'll be back with more right after this. Hey, welcome back. You are listening to Ford Deep Sports Talk here on the news station. 1320 AM WARA, we're on our Facebook page. Actually, four words, Ford Deep Sports Talk. If you want to listen to the podcast, just go to our website. All one word, Ford Deep Sports Talk.com. We have the privilege of having our coach of the year, Cheryl Seavey from Bridgewater Graham High School. And, of course, Kenzie Madelon is the standout student and player, averaging 591 minutes per game. Free throws, she, all right, I, I'm going to tell them exactly what you did. How's that, Ken? Do you mind if I brag? Okay. All right, thank you. I hope she's not cringing, Coach, as I, as I read up these stats. She might, she might just, you know, get a little red face. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So she, again, 591 minutes, tw- uh, averages 24.6. Uh, total field flows, uh, she was 96 to 226. Which is, um, excuse me, points, point four oh seven free throws, 38, round of 22, averaging, uh, I know people used to, used to say batting average is good, point, uh, point three eleven, uh, rebounds, average 5.6, uh, offense 55 rebounds, defense 79 for a total of 134. I hope, I know, I know, uh, Jim Craig is telling me if I mess up the stat. She averaged, which I had the pleasure of mentioning, her 100th steal during the semifinal state championship team at the Garden. And her total points were 262, averaging 10.9, might as well say 11 points per game. Kenny, that's really cool, you know. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, as far as the team stats go, which is really cool, points per game were 60.5. The scoring margin average was plus 17.7. Uh, continuing on, three, uh, three, three pointers, uh, field goal percentage was 0.94%. The made percentage was 7.3 for the team. Free throws, if I like to call from charity stripe, uh, was 0.595, uh, free throws made per game with 8.3. Rebound, rebounds per game for the guys, for the girls, excuse me. Uh, what, uh, per game was 41.3 with a plus margin of 7.9. Turnovers per game were 13.3 with turnover margin of plus 6.0. Steals with, you had a little bit to do with it. Uh, steals per game to 12.3. Total steals 295. Blocks 85. Blocks per game 3.5. And the attendance, this is really good. One thing, I'm gonna put up that picture again of Red Nation. One thing about Red Nation, I mean, there's a lot of school pride in that school. Would you agree, Kenzie? I would, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, the amount of kids, I mean, some kids just want to hang out and be with their friends. But nine times out of ten, I mean, Coach, you could probably, um, you know, confirm this as well. They're they're into the game. They're watching every move these ladies, these lady Trojans make on the court. Absolutely. We had such tremendous fan support from both uh, you know we, you know you went in time on any given night you looked out and you saw our location but then you saw our, our kids' families uh, and their grandparents and then you know I even saw kids that I went to high school with my friends who come to the game or, or just people generally in the community that want to be part of this and that they recognize that this is something special that their role, these young ladies are role models. And, you know, in a world that you're searching for good things to happen or, or a positive story, what both the Astros and the Rotary and him, um, 
real ground plays in the rest of the team, and, and JV team as well, top to bottom. Uh, so I, I loved all the fans for it. Uh, we love, I love that these young ladies take being a role model so seriously. That after the games, they're talking to the little kids, and that these young young kids that are coming up to our players just have these big eyes of, wow, I want to be like you. Uh, and it all starts, like I said, it all starts with that great community sport, and right from Red Nation all the way through our communities of Goodwater and Rainbow. Absolutely. So the other thing I wanted to mention, Coach, and I want to get this McKenzie now that we're winding down. I hope I, I'm pretty sure I didn't go down this avenue yet. Coach, as a, as you know, as the head coach, what do you expect either from someone trying to make this team or a possible player coming from another school? What what does it make to be a lady Trojan on this basketball team? A, a, a basketball player. The first thing I tell the kids in the first day and class is that this experience isn't for everybody. This is hard. It's hard work, but there's, there's expectations for this program. Uh, and the expectations are laid right from the day one of tryouts. And they're asked to be at the gym 30 minutes prior to stepping onto the floor. So you have to be, you know, if you're all the time, you're late my all. So the expectation is you're early. That's practice this groundwork and framework. Um, the expectation is that you are going to work incredibly hard. That, like I said, this experience isn't for everybody. It's hard for a reason because there's only the last few on each team that can do this. And we carry rosters of 12 kids, 10 kids, you know, so we truly are the best of the bunch that are the only ones that are, are on our team. Uh, they know that we have expectations that we're, we're going to be asked to do certain things physically, that we're going to be asked to do certain things. Uh, Mentally, they're going to be asked to know the playbook. Uh, they're going to be asked to focus on all those little details and the few big things. But they're also going to be asked to continue to be good members in their community. They're going to be asked to do some community, community involvement. Uh, they're going to be asked to be good teammates and to trust each other, to support each other. As I said, you have to be part of our family. So, you know, you're all in or you're not. And like I said, I, I'm very honest with the kids in, in my assessment in the beginning of, you know, the practice that we try with is that this journey isn't for everybody, and it's going to be hard, but it's going to be worth it. And I think definitely it was worth it this year. Another year of it being worth it. And it's uh, something very special to be able to, uh, to experience with these young ladies. I'm very fortunate. That's awesome. All right, Kenzie, what about you? Someone trying to come in to make this team or someone coming from us? Another school. What advice would you try to instill? I know we talked a little bit about work ethic, but just all around. I mean, this is me. It, it's not an easy thing to do. You gotta love it for one. Yeah, definitely. Um, you just have to be invested in what we're trying to do and what we're trying to build. Um, I think the biggest thing for our team is just being a good teammate um, on and off the floor. Um, as you can tell, we're such a close team, and I think that's why we have. We had so much success in the past three years. I've been at the R. Um, I've never had an issue with any of my teammates. Um, they're my best friends. So just having that really strong relationship with each player, um, which translates on the court, is a big part of our team. And, of course, work ethic. I mean, um, we're a very hardworking team. So just coming to practice every day. Um, ready to learn, not just from our coach, but from each other, and um, just producing that success from the and when it comes to time for games. That's awesome. All right, so we're approaching the part of the show where we need, I thought you guys might want to give some shout outs, some well deserved shout outs to anybody who comes to mind your dog, your cat, your parrot, you know. You can throw your pants in there if you want to, but I didn't know if uh, you guys want to do a couple shout outs. Uh, well, Ken's out of the for me. I can always talk. Um, I just want to thank all the close responders out there um, that are on the front lines every day. There's several friends who, who are nurses, and just to see what they're going through and the determination and the courage that they're uh, facing the, during this pandemic is, is just heroic. Uh, so I just want to thank all the close responders, to, you know, the firefighters, police, EMTs, uh, the nurses, the doctors, and, and even a big thank you to those that are, you know, stocking the grocery shelves or, or, you know, driving trucks for us. And they're really keeping this country moving during this 
tremendous time in university. So, I mean, that's my big shout out is to them to say thank you. Awesome. What about you, Kenzie? Anybody? Want to shout um, out to? Yeah, same, same thing as well. All the people who are on the front line. Um, I mean, hats off to you. You're really keeping us all together right now. Um, anyone who's suffering from this virus right now, um, I wish you uh, the best of luck and um, health. Um, and my teammates, shout out to my teammates and my coach. So you guys are the best. Um, and thank you for having me. Oh, it, was a, it was our pleasure. I wish I had, I wish I had a chance to come up for breath, a fresh, a breath, <laughs> fresh air. I mean, <laughs> usually I have a couple interns in here. I don't know if you guys ever watched the show on uh, Bridgewater or Random Access TV. Usually, it's usually more than one person here. And all I have to do is just run the board and I have someone running the computer. I'm actually going to earn my pay today. I'm going to give myself a pat in the back. Yeah. But I think you guys <laughs> definitely hit the nail on the head when you mentioned the first responders. There is nothing, I mean, I think it's one of those, you know, you see these professional players, and this is why I love doing high school news sports. Um, they get paid so much money. And then you have all these other people, Cheryl, you mentioned, about how they're just doing their job because they love it and they're bringing a livelihood into their, into, their, into their home. And they're not getting the recognition I believe they should be getting. And again, I just want to, you know, Add, the, add to what you said earlier, hats off to all those people. I have friends and, you know, I coach freshman football over Bristol Plymouth and the head coach, John Paris's wife, Monica, works for the Good Samaritan. And it's just unprecedented the effort they're making. They are the soldiers fighting this fight for us right now. Definitely, definitely. And like that, thank you again for having us. And thank you for all that you do in promoting high school sports and promoting our story and, and talking about our community. We really do appreciate it. Well, hopefully you'll see me soon and we'll be back at it and uh, hopefully go on another great run. Guys, thank you very much. Be safe. Thank hopefully you. I'll see you soon. All right. Thank you again. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. And that was Kenzie Madalonis and, um, of course, Coach Stevie. Coach Stevie was nominated our Coach of the Year through, uh, you know, the voting that we do, I asked the guys who they thought one of the coaches, other coaches of the year were, and this, uh, coach, um, Susie was, uh, hands down, hands down the, uh, the best nominee for the coach of the year. I mean, there was, there was some top, top nominations, coach the girl from, coach, uh, coach the girl from Foxborough. She, she was a coach here a couple of years ago as well. But with that being said, I'm Dominic Damiano here from 40 Sports Sack. Next week, I won't be here. Luce Cabral, will be here. She has some special guests. I think she's actually going to bring a pro wrestler to sit across the table from her. And um, hopefully Brett Childs will come and keep her company and they'll do some talking. Uh, and I know I think the second week she is going to have a friend of hers from Swansea Access TV via the phone lines, talk about Swansea Access, Swansea, Swansea Sports and uh, everything going on in the town of Swansea. And as far as the high school level goes, it's, hopefully we'll have a, a fall season with you know, football and all the other great sports and then rolling the basketball and, you know, that, you know that stuff. I'm just rambling on trying to let, let this time die down. I'm Dominic Damiano again from 4D Sports Talk. My hat's off again to all the first responders, everyone that does a fantastic job, you know, keeping us safe, you know, again, adding to um, what Cheryl C.D. said. We will catch You're you next listening time. to WARA, 1320 AM, Attleboro. The 40 Sports Talk broadcast is brought to you by Physical Therapy U. For more information, they can be reached at ptuclinic.com. Audrey's Restaurant Banquet Facility of East Bridgewater. Their website is audriesrestaurant.net for all of your restaurant and banquet needs. Megan Chase of Kim West Real Estate. Her contact information is 774-240-7707 for all of your real estate needs.
This has been a presentation of 4 Deep Sports Talk, where high school and youth athletics come first.